Hey, all my runners. If you're getting this inside knee pain, I think I have the fix for you. Whether you're an avid runner or whether you're new to it and you're getting this kind of inside medial knee pain, uh, it, it seems like it's becoming the, the new runner's knee. Now, the typical runner's knee is where we get kind of the subpatella pain, IT band, kind of lateral. But what I'm seeing frequently is this inside knee pain. And what it mainly attributing to is the source of pain is called the pes anserine muscle group. So there's three muscles that cross up into the hip and then they cross into the knee and they're getting all triggered and wired. There's a combination of poor control either from the foot, the hip, and the core, generally rotation, as well as uh, so maybe some, some blocking or maybe some restriction at the hip. This first video, I'm gonna walk you through how to unlock that mobility of the hip. And then as we move through the series, we're, I'm gonna show you how to retrain the, the hips, the core, the feet, all the way up into standing and then into some motor control. First thing we're gonna check, we're gonna look at our hip rotation. So we're gonna stand simply, single leg balance, okay? You can put your hands on your hips to see if you're doing any kind of weird hip hiking thing, that's just gonna give us some information. Maybe you might be compensating and you're going to simply rotate the hip across, so external rotation and then to internal rotation. What we're looking for is kind of this. You're like, ah, I kind of feel, doesn't look as good and it feels a little bit restricted. Might be feeling a little bit of tightness in the glute there, or it might be a little pinch in the groin. So that's our first test that we're gonna look at. Next, we're gonna look at our Faber's test. So we're gonna take our right foot, place it just above the knee, and let the hip drop towards the floor. Now, we don't want to be twisting and rotating through our back. That's an indication of a tight hip. So again, you can put your hands on the hips. See if that leg almost falls to parallel. Compare right to left, and if you see something like this, we're like, oh, that's not rotating, or you're kind of rotating away, that's an indication that maybe that left hip might be a little bit restricted. So we're gonna unlock that left hip by using the pin and move technique. So first off, we'll go poking around into the glutes, maybe piriformis, maybe glute med, don't really care. And we're gonna find the OT spots, and you're gonna hold it there, and you're going to press the knee up towards your face. So adding some resistance with that right hand, pin it, move it, and then you can pry that hip open, just like so. Three to five reps, usually all you need. Go poking around, see if you find anything else. If not, we'll move on. Over to TFL. Okay, so we're gonna go poke in just between the two hip bones, so the top of the iliac crest and the greater trochanter, so the, the bottom hip bone right there. Roll a little forward, see if you find anything going on. If you got something, lift that bottom leg and bend. So three to five reps. Nice, easy breathing. Okay, get it up as high as you can go. Get a little stretch in the outer hip. We're gonna move into the adductor muscle group and the pes anserine. So I'm gonna roam around looking for some nice fun spots to poke on. When I find something, I'm going to bend the knee and it's gonna be a little uncomfortable. So we're pinning and we're stripping those adductor group muscles. Okay, we can play with a little bit of rotation here as well. So you'll see the foam roller is running parallel with my body. My leg is around 90 degrees and might be a little bit of stuff going on a little higher up. Feel free to roam around and poke but typically we're gonna find the most trigger points a little bit lower down. Once you've got some new input going on in there, I want you to pick up that leg. So we're gonna add a little bit of strength around that. Lift, bring it back, and you're gonna find, you're gonna really have to push into the floor. So your core has to work tremendously hard here. And you're using the glutes in the short range that typically aren't challenged enough because we sit on our butts for the majority of the day. And then speaking of butts, if you do get a little spasm in here, that's okay. That's just the muscle turning on and working. And then go poking around and see if that toned down. A lot of times, just by activating the glute, all of a sudden, we've got some new, uh, new information, a little bit more relaxed in the, in the adductor group. And lastly, since we added some strength in the short range of that left glute, we're gonna add some strength into the long range. So starting in quadruped, bring that right leg out to the side. If you've got good strength to lift it and swing around, great. If not, you can just sweep it on the floor. Keeping 
my lower leg parallel to the mat, I'm gonna slowly slide down. Now use your hands carefully and lower into this. You don't wanna tear anything, but what we're doing is we're pivoting into this pigeon pose here. And then as I come back up, I'm contracting that glute. So I'm using my glute in the long range and you can either sweep the legs, you can use your hands if you need to, up into a lunge. So now we can open up that hip. So here, okay, you can either sweep the leg, pivot, put the hands on the floor, sink down into it. If you feel like you've got good control, take away the hands. You can lift the leg, swing, stretch. Okay, you can lift, pivot. Okay, put the hands down as you need to. Slowly come down, use your hands as much as you need. Come up, spin and stretch. Be very careful how much you load into this. If you don't keep the leg squared up and you're not moving to the hip, you can go to the knee. So use your hands and, and respect what your range of motion is, what your control is. Of course, after we've changed the input and we've integrated some new movement, we want to go back and check our work. Are those hips moving freely? Do they feel the same? And if everything looks and feels symmetrical and feels good, now you can move on to video two where we start to integrate the core and the pelvis from the ground working our way up.